Okay, if you haven't watched the live streams of me working on deconning and uh, polishing the G80, um, go check those out. One of them is five hours long. You might want to skip around on that one uh, with the last live stream. But uh, I'm about to tackle the, uh, the pig snout here. I'm affectionately referring to. I guess that's pretty common. I thought I'd made that up. I was real excited. I thought I came up with that, but apparently I didn't. Um, but we're going to tackle the front bumper here and use some of the fancy tools that I got and work through, you know, how I'm going to tackle this. Um, I've been able to one step almost all the car. And if you're not familiar with polishing, that means using a polish that only requires you to use one pad and one polish. Instead of doing multiple steps, we're using multiple pads and multiple way or multiple um, uh, types of polish like a compound and then a finishing polish. I just want to tape up this black here because if I hit this it makes a mess. But I'm gonna have to polish the grill a little bit. I just really dislike shadow line trim that this car has all over it because it just doesn't do well. You'd probably be best served you know, attempting to put some PPF on as much of this black shadow line as you can. It's really thin, really soft, and tends to be really problematic when it comes to scratching. You know, there's not really much you can do about it other than just deal with the fact that it's going to be scratched up a few minutes after polishing. Um, so I'm just going to take this black plastic here. Um, Sean's getting new round L's, so I'm just going to leave those alone. Uh, we're going to try to get in as much of this carbon fiber as we can. Uh, obviously, I've taped off the, the laser, the headlights, and um, we're going to polish this. I'll show you how I'm going to tackle this, but the paint on this is really fantastic. It's probably, probably the best paint I've ever seen on a BMW. Um, it uh, has the least amount of orange peel that I've seen on any BMW, I think. There's still orange peel, and I, honestly, I think you want orange peel to some extent. Uh, unless you're going to do some really sophisticated metal correction, uh, you, meaning you know waves and and um, you know panel gap correction and all of that stuff, um, the the added benefit to orange peel, other than you know it being more environmentally friendly, friendly the type of paint that they use that allows orange peel to show up, is the um, the fact that it takes your attention away from any waves or imperfections in the metal. So if we wet sanded this car, there's probably not enough paint on this thing to wet sand it, but if we wet sanded it out and the paint flat, uh, then you would notice all the imperfections in the, in the surface. So um, let's, I've already done the hood, so let's start working on, there's some bug residue, hopefully we can get most of that stuff off. Um, Sean's not going to do paint protection film on this car because he's not going to be doing a lot of highway driving and Orlando is pretty forgiving. So we'll start here, work our way around and down. Let's see how we're going to tackle this as well as the shadow line front lip here. And I think what I'll do, I think I'll start with the three inch. Now, if I was compounding this, uh, you know, and getting the lights out, there's no, there's no real, even after deconning this, even after abrading the surface, the paint is solid enough that I don't really have any deep scratches or anything that I need to use a heavier polish on. But if I was compounding this, I'd lift the hood up. But since I'm just going to be doing a finishing, like a, a one-step Sonex, Sonex Perfect Finish finishing, uh, I'm just going to leave it closed and just go right over it with, uh, with my three-inch polisher here. So this is the uh, Flex F XFE 7. It's, it has a 12 millimeter orbit. And I have a Rupes, um, their new yellow pad. So I'm using a medium polishing pad, if you will. Probably not medium. Medium fine, we'll call it, polishing pad with a medium fine diminishing polish. So this will start as a, what they call a polish of four, a cut of four, and finish out at a gloss of six, if you will. Always shake up your polish. And then I'm gonna prime my pad. It's a brand new pad. Keep an eye out on Instagram. I always sell all my pads after I'm done with them. It's a new policy I've instituted for myself, so I don't have to wash them anymore. 
new dialed in shirt will be in the store by the time you're watching this video. We used to only have it in black. I requested we have it in blue and gray. We now have it in blue, launches this month. A little bit of polish on our primed pad. And I'm gonna do this, this section here. Since this is so darn aggressive and all kinds of stuff going on, we're gonna have to break this up into a million different little sections. So spread around your polish. Go up to four and a half. My little towel, always check your towel. Make sure there's nothing on it. We're good. So there's some bug guts there, still there. I think it's already etched. I don't think that's gonna come off there. A little Jeskar. So this is what I've been doing on the surface of the car. I have my little one inch on a dual action mode on the little rupees and I've been hitting some spots to see like if I have a, a deeper scratch that the perfect finish isn't taking out I wouldn't do this on any car but I'm treating this like this would be my M3 maybe more of a rock chip I think that's a, like a glance of a rock or something that is kind of stuck there. Yeah. That's definitely from a bug. And of course you need to refinish that. Gosh, this paint looks so good. I love, I love this color. Just this color alone makes me want to get one of these. You just we just hope that you know if they come out with either aftermarket or if there's a LCI version, you know, like a new launch of this later in its life. If they come out with one of the grill that isn't like this, I'd be in. Maybe. That's the easy part. I'm gonna do all this nonsense. So every single one of these is all scratched up. And I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get all the way in there. And then the first time you wipe it, it's gonna scratch again. But we're gonna at least clean it up for today. Oh, shoot. I don't like that. Again, if you'd probably be best served taping up your round L, and depending on the angle of the car, you know, the lights in here, I can normally just follow the light. Yeah, see, there's some bug remnants there that isn't coming off. And there's a scratch here that I don't like. Might have to rotary this one. I don't think it's, it's never a good idea to rotary with microfiber. So I like to uh, use the dual action microfiber. Too much polish. I learned that technique from Todd Cooper Rider where you take your pad, you lean it up on the edge, and you scrub, scrub, and then flat. All right, so I'm scrubbing, scrubbing, and flat. And you can kind of work the area. You just got to be careful. You don't want to blow through the paint. I mean, it'd be kind of hard with dual action polisher, but. Yeah, see, it's still bug etch there. It's part of the deal. And this is... Improved it a little bit, but... And then what I'll usually do is just take a little bit of the remnants of the... This car is new enough and nice enough that I'm counting the imperfections, you know, on one hand. I can think of like three of them on the whole car. Uh, there have been like five total and I haven't been able to get them all out. But they'll come with 
washing and age has only been washed twice. Okay, so in here, we could try a little rotary one inch with an extension, or let's see if three inch, see three inch is not gonna, not gonna really get too far in there. Um, I wonder if the big, this one, cause it sticks out. Let's try the, let's try rotary with a little extension on. I usually only like to use, rot rotary means it's direct drive, but I usually only like to use rotary if, um, if I'm up next to an edge somewhere, so it's not, so the DA isn't butting up against it. But I think rotary might work okay on this here. Let's see. You want to run it this as slow as you can. Making a mess. I believe Perfect Finish is actually a polish designed for rotary. Let's see if that does any improving. I'm going to use one of the really soft towels here on this one. Yeah, I mean, looks pretty darn good. I think that's our ticket. And I think, you know, being a new car, I think I'm just gonna leave this, leave this thing here alone. Not mess with that. Let's do a little bit less polish. So remember, think about this. This is a polish that breaks down. So it starts as a cut of four and then breaks down as you make successive passes to you know the little pebbles they they inside of the polish they shrink down and so you want to spread it around evenly and then come back and refine as you're breaking down the polish with successive passes I love this little Rupes extension. We have it in the store. It's awesome. The nice part about the shadow line is it's really soft, which makes it correct out easily. The bad part is it's really soft, which makes it scratch really easily. I just, I never chase perfection on the shadow line because it just doesn't freaking work. You can get it there, but 10 minutes later, it's going to be scratched again. And so I like to just move some polish around on it, and call it a day. I got to get some of those tools where you do like the little extender thing, on like a little, little spring loaded hose. You know, the ones you use to get under door handles and stuff. If I was really obsessed, I'd be polishing underneath too, but. I'm not sparingly on the polish and rotary, otherwise you're gonna fling it everywhere. Yeah, I guess I can get in here a little bit. So this is the long neck. I think you, you do the long neck first, short neck if you're just awesome. And you want to go to that next level of your level of awesomeness, like me, you get two. Two-handed operation, one-handed operation, but really it's just you're lazy and don't want to switch out uh, backing plates and stuff. And because we're only one-stepping, 
as soon as we're done polishing, we can pull the tape right off. Never does that. What the heck? This is 3M Precision Poly Tape. No, 3M Precision. The poly is the purple stuff. I don't like the purple stuff. We're gonna stop carrying that. So, you know, it looks better. And you can certainly get shadow line, especially if you had more room. You can certainly get it perfect for a short period of time, but I generally go to like 90% and call it a day. Especially on something like this where you're not gonna be scrutinizing. You're gonna try not to look at this girl if you can help it. You know? Try to pretend like it's not there. I had some dude, you know, some guaranteed five foot six, spiky hair from New Jersey said, the only reason you old, you old nerd dads don't like, he wasn't cool enough to say that. The only reason you don't have style, you know, you see it, you know, people who have fashion, who have style on YouTube, they really like the grills, but the people who don't have style don't like them. I said, come get out of here. Guaranteed he wears Ray-Bans everywhere he goes, even at night. And he probably optioned a sunroof. <laughs> Am I right? You know what I'm talking about? You know that guy? We all know that guy. So he was making comments about how just it's only the people who have style who like the grills. <laughs> yeah, those are called douches. He's 23. Goes to the clubs. What's the cool thing right now? You gotta wear like the, the like douchey pants that come to like here, super tight. You know what I'm talking about? Like clam diggers or whatever. Those are for like girls. And I thought they were stupid when girls wear them. You don't know, Matt. You only wear t-shirts and the same shorts. Yeah, there's one best way to do it. It's called don't be a dork. I wish I could take that M3 badge off. John will get mad at me. How dare you blaspheme taking the M3 badge off. I don't need status, I'm not going to the clubs. Guarantee that dude has curb rash all over his wheels too. I love the burbles. Burbles are the way to go. I love those pops and cracks, man. See, what I don't do on shadow line, I learned my lesson, been polishing it for Many years now, I don't get the lights out. I don't want to look at it. I just want it to look good from here. Doesn't it look good from there? Looks good. This is like the level of the guy who, uh, you know, polishes on YouTube. He polishes like the Ferrari F355 or something. And then he pans like four feet away on the car on the camera. So it looks like he just made it perfect. And we all know there are pits and scratches and nicks and bug etching and all that stuff. This car has like 80 miles on it. There's bug etching, so. There's... All right, let's got two more of these little slats. I thought this was gonna be more painful than it is. You know, from here, it's, if they just did this, it'd be great. Just get rid of that part. Yeah. Oh, buddy. Not really getting much of these bottom ones here. Okay, so I'm gonna polish this thing here. Let's bring the car up a little bit. It's a luxury of having a lift. It can be, get the car whatever you need it to be. Yeah, I don't love doing bumpers and stuff like this because it's just, they're no, like you can't if do all these tiny little areas. Ah, 
should have left the tape on. Dang it. Please come off. Okay, we're good. Should have left the tape on for another two minutes. So you want to get some Meguiar's M39 from a store for if you ever get polish and you can't get it off of like plastics. All right, now we can make some progress here. Okay. And when you're finishing, you don't generally have to blow out the pad as much. I just blow it up when it gets kind of caked up. And then we'll grab the big boy and do the side piece. Plug it in. Yeah, this bumper sucks, man. Should have made a video on the hood, not the bumper. It's my goal in life is to, I'll just hire somebody to do the bumpers and the doors. I'll do the roof, the hood, and the top of the trunk. Then if I'm really awesome, someday I'll get, somebody will make a Matt Mormon exposed video. That's my goal. I wanna be awesome enough to be hated enough to have an expose on exposing me. I was watching that video on all those people that like uh, on Netflix where they paid that, that weird dude to like and get the kids in college. I thought that was pretty cool. <laughs> I don't know why I thought it was funny. All right, so I'm gonna polish this bottom section here and then we can probably adjourn from the video. You'll get the gist of it, but I did this to the rear bumper, same thing, kind of working through the same process using a little bit of rotary, a little bit of DA, spot checking, like little scratches. Um, you know, the shadow line to me is more about just kind of jeweling it up because it's gonna scratch anyway. So if you really were you know, worried about your shadow line trim, the thing you should do is polish it, perfect it, and then put uh, paint protection film on it would be the, the way to go to get it so that it's not a, a super annoyance. And I, I've always planned to do that, I've just never done it. Coating it isn't enough. It'll still scratch. You know, like these are those areas that like, do you really wanna, are you gonna get down there with a the light? like lay on the ground. For me, I like more of just get in as much as I can and kind of jewel it up and call it a day. Kind of move a little polish around and that's it. Some of these, some of these areas you can do more harm than good. So you need to be careful not to ram your polisher in there and burn a hole in something. A lot of it's more just about cleaning it up. And then we'll coat all this. So that's the bumper cleanup. And you know, I've done this to the doors, I'm doing it to the jams, I'm doing it to the whole trunk and every other part of the car. And that's how we're doing this in one step and just kind of choosing a spot here and there to clean up. but. That's the processing, that's the polishing process. I guess I'll, I'll probably set the com camera up and just for the, just for the sake of having it, how beautiful this thing's gonna look when we wipe it down and then put the, put the coating on, it's gonna look freaking incredible. So anyway, thanks for watching. More uh, on the G80 M3. We have a driving video that goes up, I think tonight before this video. So that should be on the channel for you to watch. And then um, I'll be doing the wheels and also uh, the interior. The interior I think would be kind of cool because it's got this crazy orange interior. So anyway, thanks for watching. As always, stay tuned for more crazy new blue dialed in shirts available in the store. I got nothing else to promote. Just keep buying crap from me so I can keep doing this stuff. So anyway, thanks for watching. See you soon.